everyone, it's Fiona Barsonis here again from my studio in Scotland and today we're going to do this really charming little painting of a penguin and a, a little chick. Um, it's watercolour and as you can see I've done some really gently soft tones in it. It's for sort of um, just slightly more than a beginner but it's still, you know, I think if you've done some of my beginner's paintings you'll get on with this one fine. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so this is the drawing that I did. I've done it a bit darker than I wanted to, so I'm hoping um, that the, some of the lines rub out. I actually did another drawing as well earlier, and uh, usually I do them really, really light, but I was worried about you being able to see it. So um, we're going to do some penguins in the snow. So what we're going to do is do a wet and wet background, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Let me just turn this other light on so that you can, that might just help a wee bit. Oh, I've switched it off again. There. Okay, so what I need to do is really wet the area and I'm not going to go right into where the penguins are. Now there's two ways you can do this. You could either get some masking fluid, it's this special sort of rubbery solution um, and you can mask areas off. Or you can just try and avoid uh, going in too near to the subject. So just for quickness, because the masking fluid stuff takes absolutely ages to dry. Um, I'm going to just try and just sort of dampen in there. There we go. And so I'm putting plenty of water on. We want it to be really quite flooded. Oops, it's running down the page. I'll just... Sorry about that. <laughs> right, okay, so we're just going to come all the way around. And literally what I'm going to do is paint wet and wet. So I'm going to make a really nice background. Um, just with some nice subtle shades. And I want it to be that they're sort of sitting or standing on this iceberg type thing and, and the water, the, this bit here at the bottom, that's the water. So you can see how wet that is, it, it really is very, very, very wet. And I'm going to put some nice sort of pastel shades in. I'm not going to do it too um, dark at all, I want to keep it really nice and light. So I'll just put some nice, nice colours in. And I've just put a bit of yellow in there. I might have to make the colours a bit darker than I would normally, just so that you can see them. So that's a bit of yellow. And a bit of yellow here. Oh. There. And maybe maybe some orange. Nice orange colour here. And as you know, this will all disperse. So I've done a few very simple uh, watercolours for you to get going and this one's just a wee bit more advanced but it's still quite simple and I'm going to try and make these um, as simple as I possibly can so that it will be a lot of fun for you to do um, as we're going along and we'll see I hope I can get lots of different um, paintings up and there'll be something somewhere that you're able to do and, and see I really love penguins. I have a friend who adores them and she even has a shop that's full of them. So I know that she'll she'll particularly like this painting. <laughs> but um, so it's just getting some colour in on there and keeping it nice and wet so it really flows nicely. I think we might put just a touch of blue in here, just a kind of a turquoisey colour. And I'll just bring that in like that but to be careful it doesn't go green of course and then what I'll probably do is just give it a quick spray with my mister as well in a second and that'll so I'm just I'm trying to avoid the yellows because I don't want it to go green but I really would like to get some blues in there as well so we'll just put And a lot of these colours that I'm putting in, I'm actually going to put in 
into the penguins too so I think it will really look quite pretty so just a bit more of the blue up there I think oh dear I've got I've got a dark colour so I've got some paper towel here and I've just dabbed that bit off so it's as simple as that if you've got some paper towel you can use that to erase as well so you can get yourself out of uh, sticky situation sometimes if if um, you have a little catastrophe which I seem to have often <laughs> and the best thing about doing watercolour is if you can learn how to get yourself out of the tricky situations quite quickly um, in the beginning then you'll you'll find that you're not too bad at it so here we are looking I'm just just touching in it's very pale I'm keeping them really light just keeping some of the colour. I might just put a tiny bit of this in here, like that. There we are. That's just slightly muddy there, but so I'm just going to take Sometimes if you get um, any another colour on your brush, it can just muddy up some of the colours. So I will just, I think I'll just put some of this nice orange in there. It's nice and bright. I'll just brush that in. So he's got a bit of a glow around him there. Well, it's a she because I'm sure that's the baby's mummy. Um, I just drew this painting out of uh, this drawing out of my head, but I'm sure that you can go on sites like Pixabay or, or something like that and you'll find lots of reference free images to use as well. Um, but I've done quite a lot of penguins, so I kind of know what they look like and the wee baby ones they're so easy to do there we are so we've got blue so there you are I've just um, put all that in I'll just zoom it in a wee bit just so that you can see the colours a bit better and I'm just going to mist that with this sprayer so it's just a fine mist sprayer and I've just given it a little coat of, of water and I'm just going to lift my paper up and allow the colours to drift into one another a bit and it's quite nice to to do that because it's it's nice if they flow you get some nice colors flowing together as well let's have a bit of orange up here eh? just add a little bit of oomph So ideally you would wait for that to dry off and then you would start the penguins. So we'll let it dry as much as we can and I will start doing the snow that they're standing on. And this is water here. So I've got a few tips for you to do um, sort of easy water because we want this to be quite a loose painting. I'm not, um, I don't want to make it too difficult for you because it's still sort of aimed at a beginner or an intermediate so I'm just wetting where the water is going to go and I'm just going around and again lots of water in there and what I want it to look like is that this is the edge of the snow so the water line starts about here but I want it to look like it's got a bit of a drop so I think what I might do is swap over to a little bit of a smaller brush and I'm going to use some indigo for this. Get some nice, quite strong colour on my brush here. And I'm going to go in to, oh, it's just going to go up into there. We don't want it to drift into the snow. And because I've only wet the bottom part of the paper, 
it should only flow down the way. So I'm just going to pop that in like that. So you can see I'm just using, you could use a flat brush or a round brush or anything for this. And can you see it just starting to drift down and it gives that illusion that um, it's water. Oh look, that's just creeping up a wee bit. So I'll just get rid of that. And I'm just going to drag that just slightly because we want it to look more like it is the edge of the glacier or whatever they're standing on. Now, with this same brush, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to nibble the edge here and I'm just going to soften that in so that this is where the water then begins. And hopefully it'll just... We will go back into this water later on, but it's just so it's soft at the moment. We can do it like that. So... That's all I did, I just with my damp brush, and because this is already wet, I was able to just nip into this, nibble it, and it just drags a bit of the paint on the brush onto here. So I'm just keeping it really pale and really light at the moment. Now, I'm going to just get a smaller detail brush now, sort of this size, and some more of that indigo a bit stronger. And just here and there, I'm going to just go in, pop in a bit darker than I normally would, hopefully. So it just makes it look a bit random. You don't want everything to look exactly the same, and that really gives it a nice effect too. So there we go. And on the bits that I've done that with, I'll just encourage it to come down slightly. So here we go. Just bring that down. Just sort of tickling it a wee bit. Just try and encourage it down to there a bit. There we are. I've still got some that's coming back, so I'll just dry that off a little bit, stop it creeping. So this bit in between here is actually the snow, and it would have quite a lot of the um, colours of the sky running into it. So what we'll do is... I've just got to be really careful that that is dry enough. There we go. I think what I might have to do is just go and dry it off with a hairdryer for a minute or two and I'll be back in a second. Here we are, I'm back. <laughs> I've dried it off with a hairdryer. The only thing about drying off uh, watercolour paper with a hairdryer, if you haven't got it taped down, it kind of buckles a wee bit, so you, you can see it's it's just a little bit buckled, but it will flatten out. Usually what I do with small paintings like this, I'll maybe put it in a book um, to flatten it afterwards or something like that. So now we're going to work on the little penguins themselves. We'll do the baby one first, and I'll get that um, smaller brush here. Now, the baby, its head is quite dark, but the body, the back's slightly darker, but it's got a really light grey tummy. So I'm going to zoom right into here so that you can see him and you can see him much better and you can see what I'm doing. So let's see if we can get a bit closer. Here we are. So what I'm going to do, I really hope I can get rid of some of these lines that I've painted in, but we'll be be okay. So I really want to paint the whole of him uh, grey but I want to make it look sort of fluffy and some strokes. So I'm going to use some um, 
Payne's Grey for this and I'm going to go in really light to start with and then hope you can't actually see that so I might have to just go in a wee bit darker. So if I can just explain to you now what I'm doing. When you paint uh, something that you want a lot of detail in, you tend to do that more um, a wet brush on dry paper. Now when I do the big penguin, I'm going to do a bit more of a wet and wet effect on the tummy. But for this wee penguin, I'd, I'd quite like to do um, this dry, on, uh, wet on dry effect. So I've just got some grey in my brush here. And I'm just sort of using my brush and flicking it down like this. And I'm hoping that you're able to see it. So I'm just going to keep working those little strokes like that. There we are. I just wet my brush a wee bit more. I think it's, it's definitely thirsty, this. So I just want it to look slightly textured. Um, and put some of those shapes in like that, just sort of fluffy. I'll probably come round the edges and try and make it a bit more fluffy uh, round there and we'll go up, up on here. Bring that down. I think on the edges I can get away with going a bit darker and then I can cover up some, <laughs> some of those pencil marks that I've, that I've done. So just trying to get some of these strokes in like this and you can see you don't have to make it look completely uh, like fur because well it's not fur it's feathers but it's like a down um, because you're just given a, a nice suggestion of what I know that um, the tummy's just slightly lighter because eventually the tummy's white when all that down falls out And then round his head is a bit darker still, so I'm going to be a bit braver. Oh, it would help if I wet the brush, wouldn't it? And I'm just going to be slightly braver round the head there. And go a bit darker still in there. And it comes round. So I've kind of got the base colours in, but I, so what I want to do is just make sure that you can see the body shape and form. So just so that you can see where the neck, the neck is, we'll put a bit of a shadow under there. So in order to do that, I'm just going slightly darker with the paint and then that just enables you to sort of see a little bit of shape and form of it, of this wee chap and we'll go, I'll pull some out make him a bit more fluffy. I could have erased some of these pencil marks but because I wanted you to be able to see it um, I've kept them quite heavy but in Normally I wouldn't um, have drawn on watercolour paper quite as dark as this because it is really hard to watercolour um, paint is quite translucent in its nature and it's quite hard to cover so um, you're better keeping your lines, any drawings or anything quite light. So look, let's put a bit of a shadow down in the crease of his arm there, make that a bit darker. And what I'll do, just to blend that, I've just got a damp brush here and I'm just going to soften that in like that. So he's got a bit of a, a bit of a shadow there and maybe, maybe a bit more here. That's a bit of a shadow there and I'll soften, I'll soften that again as well. So I've just put some water in. We'll make his wings slightly darker. And his head is just that touch darker too. So let's have a look. Go back 
you know, I'm, I'm always cautious and I always go in a bit lighter to begin with and then at least if it's not going well I can maybe eradicate some of it by using my paper towel just wetting it and uh, getting rid but if you go in too dark especially with a lot of the indigo in particular oh my goodness it stains the paper really quite bad and you can't get the the colour out at all so I try to keep it light and then just darken be much better to just darken as you're going along so we'll, we'll pop a bit darker on his on his back now there we are so you just keep it wet and just keep softening in some of these so he's got a wee tail there look like that a bit more fluffy okay and the wing itself is quite dark so I'm just going to go in slightly darker with the wing and we'll just bring that Just lots of little short strokes like that, um, and hopefully it will look fluffy. It's just a suggestion, really, because you, your brain will tell you that it's a fluffy thing, you know. So I'm nearly done. Nearly done that bit. A bit more. And then usually what I do is, as I'm going along, I, I end up thinking, oh, I'll, I'll darken that bit and I'll lighten that bit. But I like to get my base, base colours on first and then that just um, gives me a better idea of, of what I'm going to do with it. So, slightly darker there in his head area. And then they've got really quite a dark beak. Um, so I'll, I'll go in quite dark. The baby chicks do have quite a dark beak. And so I've just put that in like that and just put the eye in like that. I think, if I remember correctly, I think they've got a kind of a bit of a darker bit round, round there too. Just make that just slightly darker. Oh, you just look so sweet. This is it. Just just keep going back and forth a bit. I don't want to spend too much time in it because I really do want it to be quite loose and uh, quite a quick painting. Sometimes you can get too uh, hit up with all the all the detail and you kind of ruin the look that you were going for in the first place. However, you might want yours to be much more detailed or looser than even I've done it. So whatever you decide is is fine. Right. So I'll just a little bit bring his bottom up there like that. <laughs> I'll keep his uh, tummy as light as that. But I think I'll just and I'm going to make sure now that his wing is definitely darker so that you can see it. sure that it looks a bit more fluffy as it's coming onto his tummy.
There's something very therapeutic about painting. You just sort of, time just whizzes past. And uh, before you know it, you've missed all your... It would be a really good way of dieting, actually. <laughs> because you wouldn't r remember to eat. I make up for it, though, once I do start eating. <laughs> right, so now we'll do the feet. And the feet are quite dark, too, so that's good. I can get in there and just just pop these wee feet in like that and that'll be that'll be plenty there I'm going to let him dry off a tiny bit now well actually what I think I might just do before I do that I might just put a little bit of lemon yellow in here just to Just to show some of the um, colours that are in the sky in his tummy, but just really pale. So, just do that like that. Maybe a bit on his space too. There we are. I like to do that. I like to have some of the colours that are reflected in the sky and things. I think it gives it a really nice effect. Well, there we go. Right, so now we'll move on to Mummy. I'll come out a little bit for you to see. So there's the baby now. Cute. And we'll come into Mummy. So I'll just zoom in a bit more so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Now, the Mummy one has, they're quite dark. Oops, they've got a dark uh, wing. And all down here is quite dark. Their feet are dark, but this part is all white. And then they've got like a flash of orangey, reddy yellow around here. They've got a really dark navy blue black uh, head. And then they've got part of a dark beak with some yellowy colour in it as well. So I'm going to work um, a bit wet and wet on this, like I was saying before. So what I'll do is I'm going to... I'll wet the tummy down with water so you can see, um, I don't know if you can see how wet that is, just a bit of a glint there but you do want it quite wet and I'll just bring that all the way down to here. And what I'm doing with this is I'm kind of just slightly scrubbing it a bit just so that I'm lifting the fibres off the paper because I want it to accept some of the um, the colours that I'm going to put in. So under his chin here and on the neck there I'm going to make it maybe just a little bit orangey yellowy so let's let's try the orange first get some nice orange in there and oh look at that wow and we'll put some of that there that's lovely I like that and I'm going to use a bit of yellow too so just one bit of yellow there. No, better not do the beat just yet. Now I don't want that to run too far, so I'll just use some paper towel just to pull that back slightly. Um, and I'll just dampen that back like that. Okay, you can maybe have a bit of a hint of that yellow down here. Something like that. There we are. And just a bit of that up like that. Now, while it's still wet, I'm going to just drop some of this blue in there. And we'll just 
bring that round. And it's all the nice colours that are reflecting. Of the snow and sky. again and I'll just soften that in. And then perhaps a wee bit of yellow. I always put the, the watercolour on just slightly stronger than I would like it to be because watercolour um, does lighten an awful lot so you end up feeling like you've hardly got any colour on you. I've got a hair on there, I'll just see if I can lift it off, that's perfect. Okay, so I'll just push that up into there and I might even, I might even just go slightly brighter with that orange. down a tiny bit. There we go. So I've just got a damp brush again and I'm just going to work that in so that it'll soften into the paint and you get that nice sort of drifted lifting it to get some of the water just to mingle in a bit there like that. There we are. Let's make sure I've got plenty there and I'm just going to let that water run down the page. I don't know if you can just see a drop coming just there. Um, I'm just allowing that to just come down the page like that. And that just gives it a nice soft, soft effect. I'll just do the same here. I might have to just go in slightly. just going to catch that puddle that's just coming down here so I'm just using my paper towel and I'm just catching that, that bit of puddle. So what I'm going to do now is the beak so I'm going to change to a smaller brush because a thinner brush because uh, it's it really is quite uh, neat and I'll go in with the yellow to start with so I'm going into this dry um, like we did with the baby and Underneath, if we put some yellow in to start with, like this. Put that there like that. There's some 
dark blue was in there also, so I'll make some room for that. Now, I think what I can do is actually just go ahead and do the feet at the moment because then I can allow that to dry a wee bit. So I'm going to move back to this smaller detail brush now and put the feet in and I, I'm not going crazy with the feet you know I'm, I'm really not putting bags and bags of um, detail in we just want they've got very uh, ugly feet actually they've got really quite peculiar feet <laughs> there and I do believe that this part of the tail is a bit darker Now, we are going to come down there and I'm doing this wet and wet technique again. So I'm just coming, oops, I've got a splodge there. And the wings are quite dark, so I want to wet all that area there. That all drift in and get that indigo again now and just drop that in so directly. Oh, that's maybe not dark enough. Let me put a little bit of paint spray in with it to get that like this. Let that run down. So, what it's doing is where I've just put the wet the water where I've wet it the paint will naturally want to flow down there um, and that's really nice you know it gives a really nice result as well so you can see I'm just creating this flow all the way down to here and it should stop where the water where you you know where you there's no more water but sometimes it does drift a wee bit more so just be aware that it, it could possibly a bit further and now I'm just going to encourage it to um, be softer as it's coming out here just get that edge like that and then up up like that there we go but I might be a bit braver with that dark and let that come down a bit more on here. Like that. Right, and then the the back of him is, is dark, but it's not as dark so I'm going to take just the indigo this time and I'm just going to softly bring that down the back like that. you could actually even make it look a bit hair you know like the feathers but I don't think I don't think you need to really I think you, because they've got very smooth um, feathers and what have you you'll get away with just painting it in. There we are. So I've painted that in and then I've got just water on my brush and I'm just going to soften up to there. And I'm not going right into there because I don't want it to um, run. So I'm just avoiding, I'm avoiding that just a wee bit. So I'm 
just getting a thirsty brush to just tidy up some of my ends. And let's do, oops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> so I'll just wet that. That's okay, like that. And that bit of a leg there might just be slightly darker because it's behind. So we could put that suggestion in, in there. Now, I've just got a damp brush now, and I'm just going to try and paint this in so that it doesn't run too much. All the way down now, like that. And I think I'll just go in again with that thirsty brush. So a thirsty brush is a brush that I've just wet and dried off. And what that does is it just picks up some of the bits and you can actually put highlights and things in, as you can see that I've done there. So it's quite handy to do and you can mop up any little bits of mistake as well. There we go. So. There. No. I want to do is I'm going to turn it upside down just because I'd quite like that to flow into this colour here. So I've just got some water on my brush and I'm just going to tap that in and hope that some of that paint will just flow up slightly. Just allow it to tap that in. And it's just so that I get more of this sort of wet and wet look that I've been that I've been looking for. Oops, a daisy! I went a bit too mad with the water, <laughs> so I'm just going to get that off a bit. And sometimes it's a bit like this. You've just got to go back and forth a wee bit until you get it as you want it. So now I'm going to do his head and I'll finish the rest of his, his beak there. So I'm going to wet his head, not quite as much as I have with the other bits because I don't want, I don't want this to run all the way down onto everything else that I've, that I've done. So I'll just, it's starting to creep in already, can you see? So we'll just... I might just go over where his eye is and I'll pop the eye in again. Can you see that? Let's go the eye. There we are, he's 
looking a little bit more like a penguin now. So I'll just use this small brush again to give it more detail in. I think just up here. Can you see? I'll try and zoom in a wee bit just to show you. So I'm just putting a bit more detail in here and the head, the beak comes all the way up from the head sort of to there and you can see how handy this wee thin brush is to get into all those nooks and crannies. There we are and I think I might just bring that up and he's got So when that's dried off a bit, I'll put the eye in. So there's our emperor penguin. He's lovely. Um, and I'm just going to put a little bit of blue between his white. Okay, so we've got mummy and baby now, and all I need to do now is the ground, the snow that they're standing on, and then I'll show you how to do a bit more of the um, water. So I'll come in just slightly so you can see. Okay, right, so I'll just get a, a bit of brush here, and I'm going to wet this area the same as I have been doing. I'm not going to bother about it being quite as saturated um, as I have with the others, but I'm still going to wet it so that the, the snow um, gets a nice soft effect rather than, if I was to do it completely dry, it would look quite harsh. So that's why I am doing it a little bit wet. Just wet all that. And then what we've got to do is we've kind of got to make this look like snow um, that there's some slight movement in. So that can be a bit tricky and the best colours to do it with is blue because the sort of shadow colours of, of snow is, is kind of blue or grey because it's reflecting off the sky. But equally it will have colours of the sky in there. So that's a bit of a, a nice thing that we can do. So we can just, hang on, I'll just get a bit of yellow and I'm just going to sweep a little bit of that in. I've just noticed that I haven't wet this area. There. Okay, so we'll go and take a little bit of the yellow not too much. Uh, maybe over here where there's quite a bit of yellow and we'll, we'll just pull some and this side too look because there's quite a lot of yellow up here. don't want it too bright because it's it would look unrealistic but it might have a bit of a glow and I just sweep sweep some across like that now we'll go in with with some of the blue. And with this it's kind of less is more, so you, you're just wanting to create the odd drift uh, so that it just looks like 
they're standing on something and I'm really being very gentle and delicate with this to get a little bit, in fact I think I'm being so delicate and gentle you can't see it <laughs> so I'll go in a bit darker and this is darker than I normally would but because it is snow and you don't want to you really don't want to go in too dark um, but it's not very good if you can't see what I'm doing there you are so you sort of get the idea of, of what you do you just sort of drift in a few of these colours in and that all adds to that illusion that they're, they're standing on some snow and they're not just floating they're not just floating around there we are right and then all we've got to do now is the water so for the water I'm going to make it really quite blue um, and I'm just going to use it as a sort of cerulean blue and I'm going to put it in really wet so I'm using that cerulean blue and I'm wetting it quite a bit it's a really nice bright blue but you don't want it to be darker than that edge that you've just made so I'll just oh dear I've just flicked some paint <laughs> on there but hopefully with a damp brush we can we can fix that there. So I just just pop that in like that. And the same again, you're just kind of brushing it in like this and just sweeping it in sort of with these side waist strokes. what I do is just with the colour that darker uh, the lighter blue that I'm using just where the dark parts of the um, you know where you just nipped in with that indigo just kind of darken those areas up slightly with that blue and it just makes it look like you've got a bit of a shadow there under there too So this was quite a quick um, video really, well, for, for a watercolour and it did have quite a bit of detail but you can see you can achieve quite a bit of detail in a short time with watercolour because it really does go far. So I've got it on like that and all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull that down into the water a wee bit. So I'm just, the paint that I've already just put on, and I'm just pulling it down, and um, hopefully you'll get the idea that it's some reflection. usually do is just this last bit here because it'll drift in quite naturally I just sort of wet that area just a bit again and I actually go back in with some of that indigo paint and I allow it to just drift 
slightly. So I'll just take a bit of that and drift, drift that in. I think we can call him done. Maybe put a few more just little drifts to make it look. So sometimes by just putting some of these um, little catches on here where maybe the wind's just moving the water slightly, it helps to give that illusion of water. There we are. Oh, I didn't put the eye in for him. So let's, or her, so let me just do that and then I think we can call this done. I've really enjoyed painting with you this afternoon and I hope that you'll join me again and check out some of my other videos. Um, there's plenty there for you to have a look at and I'm trying to aim it at complete beginners, people that have got a wee bit of experience and then more advanced. So I really hope you enjoyed this lovely little painting and I'll hopefully join